From relative obscurity, the name of Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Bo, has in the past few weeks almost become a household name in the, on the streets of southwest Nigeria. Thanks to his one-man crusade to checkmate the activities of killer headsmen in the region. It all started when he issued a quick notice to the headers, many of whom have been accused of various crimes, including rape, dispoliation of farm holdings, and murder of innocent locals in the course of sudden premeditated attacks, having connected with many folks on the street with his message of liberating Yoruba land from oppressors. Igbo also appears to have earned the support of certain political and traditional authorities in the Southwest. Joining us now to look at where all of this is leading to or may lead to, as well as other issues of national importance, is Akin Oshuntokun political scientist, strategist, researcher, administrator, journalist, and a writer with experience in media advocacy, policy research, and political analysis. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Good morning, Ruben. You're always intimidating me <laughs> with your citation of my <laughs> credentials all the time. Of your commendable accomplishments well, as a very important Nigerian. I haven't, I haven't seen uh, children for a while, but I want to echo the voice of someone who was describing her as, as a beauty. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Bashan. Well, all of you are obsessed with uh, Tundu, <laughs> but don't worry. <laughs> Quickly, I mean, we just showed a video of uh, an emerging situation in Lagos, as reported by Sheiton Atigarin, uh, Arise News uh, correspondent. Uh, this week, uh, we're told that uh, the uh, Lekki toll gate has been reopened, and the managers of that toll gate, the uh, Lagos Concession Company, they are already trying to put the place uh, together. The uh, Judicial Panel of Inquiry in Lagos, chaired by Justice Okubi, having taken a decision on Saturday to grant uh, the LCC the permission to uh, resume their uh, business. Uh, but now you have uh, uh, a group of uh, Lagosians, interested stakeholders, who are saying that they will occupy that uh, Lekki toll gate on uh, February 13, and uh, as early as 7 a.m. But you also have another group uh, called uh, Defend Lagos, uh, who are also saying that, well, they too will be there uh, 7 a.m. on uh, February 13, which is uh, Saturday. Uh, what's your take on this? What should the government do in Lagos State uh, what should be the intervention of the security uh, agencies? And I ask you because I know you live within that axis. Well, you know, um, if I were Lagos State Government, I would use it uh, as a gesture of uh, goodwill to the young people who stage the, who are involved, justifiably, you know, protesting the, 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 the sadistic uh, harassment of SARS. And leave it like that. Don't, there's no need to reinstate the um, the collection of tolls on the gate. The government can afford it. Any government that is sensitive to uh, its perception, how it's per perceived by the general public, uh, should take that step, uh, not to reinstate the toll, uh, especially in this very harsh. Uh, economic times and conditions. Um, so this this is my own uh, uh, opinion on it, and uh, they can even put um, uh, you know a banner or uh, there uh, permanently that uh, on account of the NSAS program and NSAS protest, on which some people lost their lives, some were maimed and things like that. You are now leaving that place permanently uh, free for people to commute uh, the place. And of course, the lady, one of the ladies, was made a very important point about in that place the tendency for traffic jam. You know, for, you know uh, when you know, uh, which of course is the fault of what? Well, not the fault. Uh, that the, the 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 public needs that kind of a lessening of stress, you know, generally in the country today. So if I were in the Lagos state government, I would just do, leave it 
uh, I don't see any radical uh, difference it will make in their capacity to for expenditure on the, in any case uh, you are doing it for the sake as many of them you know made the important point that it belongs to the public but as I said you know the NSAS protest is very unique and um, uh, you can either use an opportunity for good or for bad uh, or just uh, you can be sensitive or insensitive um, or sensitive. So if I were the legal state government, I would just, you know, in honor, you know, of those young uh, Nigerians who staged that protest, you know, to leave the tolls out of the, those, those, uh, uh, at, the, at the toll collection uh, points. There's no, it will, if the government will, you know, uh, benefit a lot from the goodwill, you know, that will be generated from there. And as I said, they like can even put a banner there, like I, I've said it before, indicating that from now is, uh, we are making it free, you know, in remembrance and honor of what took place there uh, some months ago. Thank you. It's actually such a shame that we're having this conversation at this point before the conclusion of the deliberations of the judicial panel. This kind of haste tends to trivialize the tragic events of the 20th of October. It's, it's really unfortunate. But moving on, I want to ask you a question. We'll take a break. Then when we come back, we'll take your answer, if you don't mind. I wanted to talk to you about the drumbeats of civil war that we've been hearing and are you know, increasingly loudly from no such less of a person than Wale Shoyinka. What are your thoughts on his advice to the president that he needs to speak up and read the riot act to these, you know, murderous herdsmen and, you know, and the fact that so far he has failed to do so. But we'll be taking a short break in a moment. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Bashan Aki Oshutoko. Before we went on the break, I was asking you about Wale Shoenka's advice or warning that if President Buhari does not read the Riot Act to these murderers, to these criminals, absolute chaos will ensue. What are your thoughts? Well, I think Professor Shoenka articulated the general sentiments and the trend, trend analysis of contemporary Nigeria. It was spot on in what he said. Uh, and it was the way Nigeria has, and Nigeria has been drifting like this uh, for the past few years. And uh, he left unattended. Uh, it was bound to escalate. Um, look, uh, my own opinion is that it's a symptom of a disease, of an underlying disease, right? At the risk of uh, sounding, you know, uh, trite, we just have to go back to the. I want to go back to restructuring. Now, look at if there was restructuring in the manner in which uh, the proponents, uh, in the manner in which, which in which it is uh, understood, uh, security is local. Uh, you can see the gap. You can see how that gap of the present constitution that we, we operate, you know, the vacuum it left uh, has been filled, you know, by um, uh, local efforts. There is no way if, if you are to have a state police, they will have better grapple with the um, uh, eruption of violence uh, before it gets to this stage. Um, so it is a symptom of, of, of the general political crisis the country has been having uh, for, for so many years. Look, the, the north, you know, the northeast, northwest, and north central, they are near imploding in crisis and violent encounters. So because of that, a lot of people, of course, including the uh, so-called Fulani Esme, have, have moved from there. 
you know, uh, it, it has spurred them to go further south in a very large uh, uh, population. I mean, I mean, to go to the south in, res in response to the uh, hostility and the uh, inconvenience, of course, of tending their cattle or whatever, you know, uh, in that place. So why I'm linking it with this is that it is a systemic problem. It's not a problem that can be taken in isolation of all the, all the other problems that the country uh, is engaged in. You know, people are talking about Amoteku, Amoteku, which is correct. That the, 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 the institutional establishment of Amoteku is in, is in recognition of federalism, of how federalism or restructuring, you know, can uh, effectively address the challenges uh, that we have. Now, imagine that Amotepu are licensed to take arms, you know, without being armed, they are making an impact. But you can Im imagine the situation where they, are where, they, where they are equipped, you know, in the conventional manner on which state security is equipped, carry guns and things like that. They will have been much more, much more you know, effective than they are now. Uh, so, it, of course, I mean, well, it is not in, it's not in the Constitution. Only the Constitution is reviewed uh, in the direction of having state police and uh, regional police uh, and things like that. We, we have in this, uh, so there are several dimensions to it. It has a short-term, mid-term, and lo long-term perspectives uh, from which you can look at, and, and, and the options for responding to it. Uh, there is the interpretation of the immediate transit, uh, interpretation uh, is the tension, you know, between uh, uh, the local population and uh, the, those who want to set the potential settler population there, uh, which is uh, 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 made, I mean, that there's a potential for conflict because of the, uh, of their, uh, the conflicting uh, occupations that they have. Uh, which is this uh, elders, elders uh, and um, farmers uh, uh, conflict. They will always be there. That problem is going to remain until something effective is done at the constitutional level. So, uh, so there is that dimension about, you know, the intolerance, the suspicion and paranoia, paranoia you know, that has pervaded the country uh, predisposes uh, Nigeria and its local communities to that kind of problem. Another part of it, of course, is the mishandling of uh, the political mismanagement of, of the president. And if you look at Nigeria, there's something, uh, I mean, to go back to what Professor Walisho Inka said, General Danjuma had actually said something like that two, three years ago, that you know, when he was, he was he's from Taraba, uh, when he was addressing the convocation gathering at the Taraba State University, that look, it seems as if the Nigerian security uh, services, including the army, are already compromised uh, and biased in favor of a subset of Nigerian population, and that people should not rely on them uh, if they want to uh, effectively uh, safeguard themselves. So these are the things like Prof. Professor was saying, skirmishes, of course. The, the, skirmishes, the skirmishes he was referring to they have not just started. They have been going on for a while. Uh, what, what makes this one uh, so uh, newsworthy is the fact that relative to the North, you know, that kind of conflict, uh, busting out, you know, uh, is peculiar. I'm saying that because look at the Northwest, look at the Northeast, where Boko Haram crisis is dominant, where large section of the population have been displaced, where farming or the people earning their livelihood have been effectively precluded from doing so. Of course, remember what uh, Gaba Shio said about okay. um, um, what happened in Bono State. 
where he was saying that uh, the farmers didn't take uh, permission, permission yeah, you know, the before they go to. So there are several dimensions uh, to it, but okay. you know, security is the okay. first law of nature. Okay. To secure yourself, what Igbo represents, right, is that that look, if government government has failed, right, in providing in being effective in this first the first the duty of a state is security. Okay. So if and if you cannot do that, it is legitimate legitimate and legal. Self defense is legitimate and legal. Okay. And that, that is what has happened. Uh, okay. okay. You want to say, you want to, let me see the floor to you. Okay. Uh, real quickly, we might take a break soon, but I'll just ask the question. I want you to react to the reactions from the North. I mean, we talked to Professor Usman yesterday. Professor Usman did uh, follow uh, Sheikh Gumi on this is peace movement in the North. And he kept on saying, you know, let us give the bandits, you know, what they want, education, security, and the likes, a wherewithal means of life. What's your take about rhetorics uh, like uh, this? Can you please repeat the question? Okay, so this is the question, if you can hear me. Yeah. I said that Professor Usman is part of the team going round to the north uh, to talk to the bandits. Professor Usman, Usman. Yusuf. Yusuf, yeah. Oh, okay. With uh, part of the uh, Sheikh Gumi party going to the forest, to the part of the north, and talking to the bandits. Uh, what's your take on that? That Okay, the bandits should be given wherewithal, you know, subventions, they are fighting because their livelihood has been taken away and the likes. You know, a lot of people are saying we are just patting the security at the back in this country. Is that the case with you? And then we'll come back and talk some more about Sunday Buhu. Go we'll right. All right, welcome back. And we still have uh, Akio Oshidoku, political scientist, strategist, researcher, administrator, and journalist. So, I mean, the point I'm trying to make here, and the question I'm asking is that the narrative now being pushed, you know, by this parley is the fact that, hey, uh, these bandits, maybe they are not so bad. It's just because things are not working well for them. It's failure of governance, that's why they're bandits. So, palliative should come in. Some have even suggested some quarters. It could be like the Niger Delta militant thing. You know, it could extend an arm to them, of goodwill to them. And I also want you to answer a quick question on, you know, the emergence of Sunday Igbo, his persona, and his fracas now is beginning to have, with some traditional rulers, it's now, it's either you're for or against Sunday Igbo, those two phenomena. Well, you know, um, Nigeria has been a state of anarchy, and it is intensifying. You know, what uh, you, you made reference to, the visit of uh, uh, Gumi to those, uh, to the bandits there that it's also a similar situation to what is happening elsewhere. So you have a conflict of outlaws, some people, whatever their excuses, uh, that taking to bandit, banditry uh, is not the proper thing to do. And of course, you know, it go, what, what, what goes beyond mere, uh, mere banditry to include the dehumanization of the victims, right? If you kidnap somebody for ransom, for money ransom, do you also need to go ahead to rape them, to sodomize people? I mean, so the, 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 the problem of now is it's not, but of course, I mean, you saw the response of uh, the governor of Kaduna State to, to the visit that look, you don't negotiate uh, whatever it, that they are. Uh, Gumi was taken in from the perspective of religion, uh, that using Islam to appeal to them to clarify. But uh, um, Nasrallah Rufai made important clarification that these people are not religious people, even though they are Fulani, they are not uh, Muslim or whatever it is. Uh, but just like I said, look, but relatively speaking, uh, the, the South is better off than. The, the experiences they are having uh, uh, in the north, but as I said, it will keep on going. Now is, Nigeria is even trending towards what we will call a perfect storm. Now, if you have the kind of crisis, political crisis, that has that gave rise to Boko Haram uh, and the Middle Belt and things like that, if you add to that 
the economic, uh, you know, regression uh, uh, that is overwhelming Nigeria. Look, you don't need to go and incite a man who has been starving for four days, right? Three days. You don't need, nobody needs to incite that kind of person, you know, to start thinking of violence. Uh, that look. So this is the, the situation that we are trending towards. And look, the ability, and it, it comes all back to the same thing. That is the restoration of federalism. Now, look, I keep on telling people that, look, those who the most legitimate leaders Nigeria ever had were the premiers uh, and presidents or prime ministers of the First Republic, namely uh, Amadou Obelo in the north, uh, Olawo and Akintola in the south, Azikwe and uh, Okwara in the, in the southeast. There was a reason the result on federalism uh, as the most e effective template, uh, the most e effective continuous template for for Nigeria. There is nobody who is more northern than Amadou Bello. If Amadou Bello found sense and logic in federalism, then on what basis are you now claiming that because the problem or the roadblock that uh, the advocacy, advocacy for restructuring has encountered is that it seems that this, they are perceiving it wrongly, that it is directed against the interest of some sections of Nigeria. Of course, that is not the case. And that's why I keep on mentioning the fact that, look, why would uh, somebody like uh, Amadou Bello sign on to federalism if it should be against the interest of the, of the Northern region? So at the end of the day, the only, and of course, uh, I don't want to be, I, want, I try as much as possible to avoid the criticizing worry on the arise. And I don't want to get you into trouble or that being known. But it also acts back to him as a president. Under his stewardship, Nigeria is sinking you know, into some kind of implosion. And before, it used to be the case that you are abuse the elites of finding the embers of division and discord. Was it, was the one, what happened in, uh, in Barapa? You don't know, was that, as it was, was the elites behind it? No, not at all. I mean, look, so this, and this is the point that, you know, you can delegitimize or seek to, you know, uh, minimize, uh, you know, the point that your opponent is making by attributing ulterior motives to it. But clearly what has happened, right, uh, the bandits in the, uh, in the north or whatever, and what happened in, uh, uh, in Ibarapa, which exactly, which by the way is a microcosm of the southwest, uh, and you are going to f find a situation in which uh, that local self-defense is going to replicate itself across the southwest. Well, <clears throat> and this will alarm. Uh, so we still have to go back to the roots, to the roots of the problem, and this is of course. But uh, I think the president has made it worse by the manner, the substance, and style of his governance, which is quite divisive and, uh, you know, uh, it arouses the suspicion, you know, and hostility about that. It brings up policies that, all do. look, look at Ruga, for instance. Uh, look at the, I mean, so you, if you have a, things are bad on, on ground, I mean, you then have a, it is being reinforced, you know, by the style and government of the person at the center. And I've also, also made this point quite, you know, uh, often, that you cannot guarantee, you know, the capability or the suitability of whoever becomes the president of Nigeria. It is, the system we have today, right, is predicated on the assumption that whoever is elected the president of the federal government at the center will be detribalized 
will be intelligent, will be broad-minded, well, will be cosmopolitan. Passion in Shino. case you don't have that... Passion Shino, yeah. if I may come in here, we have mm -hmm. just about two minutes to go. First, let me assure you that uh, in time you are on uh, this channel, you are free to say your mind. Uh, we won't get into trouble with anybody as long as we stay and uh, promote the truth. Uh, but very quickly, why is it so difficult for leaders, South and North, to talk together? I see Southern leaders talking to people in the Middle Belt. We don't have that uh, dialogue with uh, the leaders of the North. And yet, each time we have uh, a Southern leader, they will say, oh, Gumi said this, this person said that. Why don't we have that conversation across the Niger, northwards? Quickly, one minute. We always try, we're always trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, under the presidential system, the president sets the agenda for the nation, for the country, which we have the conspicuous example of what is going on in the U.S. Biden has taken that initiative. is a one driving, and we heard what he was saying, that stressing bipartisanship, uh, bringing people together, unity. You know, so... This is a problem, the specific problem that we have is that the, 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 the person uh, who champions that, right, who has the capacity to do so, who has the legitimacy to do so, is the president. But the problem we have here is that the problem uh, of the president that we have has chosen not to do that. There is a limit to what non-state actors, you know, can do. I mean, uh, as, how much is how many years? Uh, or neither have been shouting, you know, uh, going around me. You know. So unless the president under this system accepts to set that agenda of maybe a constitutional review, of dialogue, or whatever, is is not going to, whatever he wants to do is not going to go far, you know. And if, and here is another side of the problem. In case yeah, the constitution we have, you know, also assumes that the president at the center, which, which is bad, which is what made the constitution bad, will behave the way you expect him to behave. He will be a patriarch, a Nigerian patriarch, neutralized cosmopolitan. This is what this constitution assumes, and it's bad, right? Actually, constitutions or whatever, from where it emanated, and that is the U.S., are predicated on the assumption that those who are in government will be bad. So you institute checks and balances. You don't assume that the, whoever you elect as president will be a good person, right? If you then have a good person as a president, that's bonus. But you need to put in place something that will restrain, you know, the incapacity of any government that does not, uh, so this is a problem we, we, we have. And uh, look, the, most of what we are now depending on worry to resolve will not have been his responsibility of building uh, while we should be oppressing federalism, you know, uh, decentralization of power, decentralized devolution of power. So, but because we are not, we have an all powerful center you have an over-centralization of, of governance and responsibility as center. And then add it to an occupant or incumbent president who, for whatever reason, whether he's unwilling or incapable you know, of taking those problems on, uh, the, that combination, what we have today is what, is go what we are going to get. You know? And until we find a way to go around that, uh, uh, look, 2020, people are talking about 2023. 2023 is going to be a mirage unless the underlying co conditions that makes Nigeria dysfunctional is addressed. Nothing is going to happen if I were worse. Uh, not only that, look, we are running out of time. You know, there are signals all over the place. When Nigeria to, God forbid, you know, implode or explode in the civil war in a year, in a year from now on. People will say that, well, what do you expect? The trend is already there. The indications are there, you know. 
So this is, this is uh, look, uh, it will be difficult, for instance, for uh, the victims. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the, 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 the specific, the Yoruba people, for, for instance, uh, not to, if you push an animal, you know, to the limit of endurance, you back the animal against the wall, it will turn back to confront you as an animal, not to talk of a human being. <clears throat> so this is what has, what anyway. is, uh, has happened, personified by, you know, uh, uh, Sunday at the end. Well, uh, you know, uh, in the back. Thank you very much. Well, I'm always uh, a bit nervous when people come on this program and they talk about civil war, civil war. Uh, yesterday, your brother, uh, um, Yinkao Dumakin, was also talking about possible war. But I have no problems. You are Bashan Oke Messi. If there is civil war, you will be in the forefront. <laughs> you will lead us to battle. I've been at it for a while. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us.